and put it up on the screen for anyone else who wants to see it later. So this is the homework we're doing right now. It's page 641, 642, and it's lesson five. We're adding unlike fractions. So I have one sixth and one fourth. So what they did is they found the least common denominator, which would be 12, right? Six could be times two would be 12, and four would be times three could be 12. So I could change that into a 12. I could also turn it into a 24, right? If I multiplied six times four and got 24, which would be another way to do it. And then I'd have 10 over 24, and I could reduce that down the same way, right? So we'll do it this way first. 1 6 plus 1 fourth. I change my 6 into a 12. 6 times 2 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. So I change my 4 into a 12. 4 times 3 is 12. And 1 times 3 is 3. So now I add 2 plus 3 over my 12s and I get 5 twelfths. Right? The other way I could do it, which some teachers don't like to do it this way, is I just take my sixth and my fourth, and I multiply this times four, and I multiply this times six. And I multiply the bottom times four, I have to multiply the top, the bottom top times four. I multiply the bottom times six, I have to multiply the top times six. So this is gonna be equal to 24, four over 24, and this is gonna be equal to six over 24, and 4 over 24 plus 6 over 24 is going to be 10 over 24. And then I would just reduce it. I divide by 2, divide by 2, and I would have 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 24 divided by 2 is 12, and I have my same answer. Because math is fun like that. I get the same answer. All right, so here i got to figure out what number they have in common, right? I could do 80. That would work. But I'll do 40, just because I can see. I know 8 times 5 is 40, and 10 times 4 is 40. So I'm going to change these to my common denominator of 40, and then add them together. And my denominator here is going to be 40. So 8 times 5 is 40, and 5, so whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. 5 times 5 is 25. Over here, I multiplied 10 times 4 to get 40, so I'm going to multiply 3 times 4, because I have to do the same thing, and I'll have 12 over 40. Now I know 40, 40, 40. 25 plus 12 is 37, so my answer is going to be 37 out of 40. 37 could get, can't get any smaller, right? And 40 could, but 37 is my is a prime number there. All right, so now I have three-fifths plus one-fourth. So this time I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my three-fifths plus my one-fourth. I'm going to multiply this one times four and this one times five. So if I multiply by four, I have to multiply by four. I multiplied by five, I have to multiply by five. So now I know my denominator is going to be 20, because 5 times 4 is 20. My numerator is going to be 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 5 is 5. And 12 plus 5 is 17. So now my answer is going to be 17, which is another prime number. Nothing times anything is 17 except for 17. 1 times 17 is 17. All right, now I have 7 and 8. Oh my goodness, I have to find a common denominator between those two. And you could just try and do right your, your but this one is going to be the easiest way to multiply by 7 and multiply by 8. And hopefully you know 7 times 8, right? It's one of those little fun problems. 5, 6, 7, 8. 7 times 8 is 56. So I'm going to make 56 here and 56 here. So I multiplied the bottom times 7 times 8, so I multiply the top times 8. 
4 times 8 is 32. And to turn this into a 56, I'm going to multiply it times 7. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 1 times 7 is 7. So 32 plus 7, all of it's going to still be over 56. 32 plus 7 is going to be 39. So my answer is 39 out of 56. Right? I warned you, they're going to start getting bigger numbers, bigger, bigger. And I will pause for a moment in case you're... So we have some word problems here. So here's Tashia ate one-third of a pizza, and Jay ate three-eighths of the same pizza. What fraction of the pizza was eaten? Right, they could change it up and say, what fraction of the pizza was left? So I'm going to have one-third and three-eighths. I need to add one-third plus three-eighths. So one-third, I need to find a common denominator. And I'm going to use my 3 times 8 is 24. That's what I'm going to use for my common denominator. I'm going to multiply here times 8 and here times 8. And I will multiply here times 3 and here times 3. So I'm going to have 8 times 1 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. And 8 plus 9 is 17. So, all together, if they had um, cut their pizza up into 24 pieces, they'd have eaten 17 out of the 24 pieces. Right? He ate 9 out of 24 pieces, and she ate 8 out of 24 pieces. So, they almost ate the same amount of pizza. And I need to tell them what they were having 17 24 of the pizza. All right, my next one, it says, Bazer took a science test on Friday. One-eighth of the questions were multiple choice, and three-fourths of the questions were true-false questions. What part of the total number of questions are either multiple choice or true-false questions? So, right, they try to trick you here a lot. Hopefully you see this, right? One-eighth. You're like, where's my other number? It's right there, one-eighth. Plus three-fourths. And hopefully you guys can see that um, I could change my four into an eight. Pretty easy, right? So that's going to be my common denominator here, eight. So to change my four into an eight, I multiply times two, and I multiply times two. So three times two is six, and I need to add my six plus my one, which will be seven, eight. And it's going to be of the questions are either multiple choice or true false. All right, my next problem is Edison delivers, so this is someone's name, Edison delivers one-fifth of the newspapers in the neighborhood, and Anita delivers one-half of them. Together, Edison and Anita deliver what fraction of the newspapers? So I'm going to have to do my one-fifth plus my one-half. So to find my common denominator here, I'm going to take five times two, which would be ten. So I multiplied times two to get ten there, right? So I'll multiply times two. Here I multiplied times five, so I'll multiply times five. One times two is two. One times five is five. Now I add them. Two plus five is seven tenths of the newspapers. Right, someone else has to deliver three-tenths of the newspapers because I need ten-tenths of the newspapers to get delivered so they all get delivered. All right, my next problem. Dylan and Sonia are hiking different trails. If Dylan hiked River Walk and Mountain View and Sonia hiked Mountain View and Pine, how many miles did each of them hike? 
So I've got to figure out both of their hikes here. So here's Dylan and Sonia. They're hiking different trails. So Dylan, so I'm going to say, here's, I'll do them right here. I'll say Dylan, oops, is right there. And Sonia is right here. So S Dylan hiked Riverwalk and Mountain View. So I need to add Riverwalk plus Mountain View. Sonia is going to walk Mountain View and Pine. So she walked Mountain View and she walked Pine. So now right, I'm just doing some math here. So I can change my two into a four. I'll do that right here, right? I'll change that to a four and that to a two. I'll multiply times two, multiply times two. And now I'll have two times two is four, one times two is two. So I add my three plus my two is going to be five out of four. Right, five out of four. You can't leave it like that. It's an improper fraction. So I'm going to say, I'm going to divide, right? Five divide, this is what this means. Five divided by four, right? Five fourths is equal to five divided by four. And so I'm doing my problem. Five divided by four. So four goes into five one time. One times four is four. Subtract. I bring down my one and I have one, my remainder, and I put it over my number I was dividing by, my divisor, one fourth. So five fourths is equal to one and one fourth miles that Dylan hiked. Now I got to do Sonia over here. So Sonia has one half plus three fifths. So I'm like, I got to change them to a common denominator. For her, I'm going to say 10 is my common denominator, right? 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm going to say 5 times 2, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. So over here, I'm going to say times 2 times 2. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. I know my denominator is 10. And 5 plus 6 is 11 6. Right, both of them went more than a mile. Sorry, 11 6. 11 tenths. So here's 11 tenths. Same thing I did, right? I'm going to take 11 tenths is equal to 11 divided by 10. So to do my work, I do it this way 11 divided by 10. 10 goes into 11 one time. 1 times 10 is 10. I subtract. I have a remainder of 1. So I make the remainder my, my numerator, and I bring my divisor up from my denominator, and my answer is going to be 1 and 1 tenth miles. And my last but not least problem... So it says, which expression will have the same sum as 3 eighths and 1 fourth? Right, so I'm going to just look at these. Will 3 eighths plus 1 eighth? No. How about 1, 2, 3 eighths plus 1 fourth? Right, oh, there it is, right? This is 3 eighths. 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth is 3 eighths plus 1 fourth. I'll look at my other ones just to make sure. 3 fourths plus 1 fourth. Well, one-fourth, I know three-eighths isn't equivalent to three-fourths, so that can't work either. And here I have one-eighth plus one-eighth plus one-eighth is just three-eighths. They forgot to add the one-fourth. So I know my correct answer is B. And we're finished.